Ashkuru sana. Uh, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this uh, evening, Lord. We thank you for your provision and protection. That you've been a good God upon us, Lord. You've given us an opportunity to undertake, Lord Almighty, the training by our able uh, servants of God. I give you praise, Lord, because you continue to give us understanding, all of the knowledge of Lord as we letting your word. As we are taken through the marriage session, God Almighty and family, we pray that God, our marriages will continue to be strong. We'll be able, Lord Almighty, even to be the light to the other marriages. Oh, my Father, for the believers will be joining in our various places of place of worship God. As now, God, we partake the session, be with us. Give us the insight, may the Holy Spirit take us through, uh, my Father, and give us an insight to understand more. We bless you and honor you more, God Almighty. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. amen. Thank you. Allow me to bring you all uh, to this class. I want to promise a good class for you. And uh, also, it's a moment all of us, we shall be learning. I'll be learning as you continue with the class. Uh, feel free to uh, feel free to, to raise your hand when you are not getting it well, uh, where you feel that uh, you need uh, you need, you need some interjection, please. Don't hesitate to raise your hand so that at the end of the day, we can have um, an educative and interactive uh, class all together. Uh, this is a very interesting class on, a, on the ground that uh, it is bringing us back to the unity of Christ, to the unity of the purposes of God in our in our marriage and in our families. Now, this class is unique, or rather, it's different from other classes on uh, different grounds. One of the grounds is that um, it introduces us to a family setting, which apparently makes the uh, make the composition of the church. When you talk of church, we talk about families. And so that's what makes this class a little bit interesting and uh, impactful. Uh, this doesn't mean that other courses are not good, but I've come to like this class, looking at it the way it is, and uh, trusting God that it's going to be a blessing to us as we continue. Uh, in the, in, we have been working on marriage and soon we'll be shifting marriage and going to family. We are going to look at family. What is the difference between marriage and family? So, but in today's class, I will pick from where I left. Uh, I'll pick from where I left. Yeah, I'm trying to to get to the slide where we left, but uh, I don't know why it's why is it that it's not functioning. Uh huh. Yeah, last week we talked about uh, the biblical foundation of marriage. And uh, well, we were able to get the definition of marriage.
Well, uh, allow allow me to speak on speak on this before we move to the next uh, the next slide on marriage. Uh, it is on getting started. This is where we left uh, the last uh, class, and so to, we are picking from where we left. We left on principles for a strong and a stable marriage. That's where we left, and that's where we are picking it from. Uh, when we are talking about principles, we are basically talking about uh, what are some of the things that you need to observe to make your marriage uh, not only stable, but very strong. Uh, we discussed that day that we need to uh, complete ourselves or uh, you need to bring yourself to the fullness of the Lord. You need to allow yourself to grow in balance of life. Uh, we looked in those scriptures that are written there. And one of the ways of balancing is developing an inner uh, conviction of becoming like Christ Jesus uh, and letting it go. Uh, if you are ready to let it go in marriage, then you are standing a very good ground. And then we looked at uh, the values you, you, you possess. They can make your marriage stable and they can only make yourself stable and strong and make the other spouse strong and stable as well. And then we also looked at uh, it that uh, we have only one purpose we live for, seeking the righteousness of God. So as a couple, as marriage partners, those are areas that we need to focus on as we want or as we seek to, to change. Now, uh, I'm still on, on building our marriage, uh, establishing our marriage on the foundation of God. Now, today we are moving to another aspect that is built on the biblical foundation of marriage, and that is getting started in marriage. So how do we start off our marriage? How do we start off our marriage? We are going to get a number of scriptures that speak on our marriage, and therefore I'm going to invite uh, uh, Brother Vincent Rono uh, to take us through the book of Luke chapter 6. Uh, verse 12 to 16. Uh, uh, Vincent, if you are there, you can turn. Uh, you can turn to Luke 6, uh, verse 12 to 16. Uh, Brother Luke, uh, not Luke, Vincent. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm searching. Yes, yes. Luke, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Yes. Kindly, uh, patient, patient, Kidogo. Yeah, we are patient. Yeah, look. And there are six verses. Six verses, uh, 12. Six verses, 12. Look, six, 12 to 16. 12 to 16. 12. Well, yes, 12 to 6. Yes. And, and Luke 12 to 16. I'm reading from authorized King James. So yes. Yeah? yeah. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray and co continued all night prayer to God. And when it was day, he called out unto him his disciples. And of them, he chose twelve, who also he named apostles. Simeon, whom, whom he also named Peter, Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simeon called Zealots. And Judas, the brother of James, 
and Judas Iscariot, which also was a traitor. Mm. Now, uh, you can stop there. Uh, there is something that is so clear uh, of which I would like us to not to miss on, on it. And uh, what is clear here is uh, Yes. Sorry for Sorry. that net. That uh, Jesus himself was a uh, was a deity. Ani alikuwa mungu. Lakini aliyeshimu na fasi ya maombi. Maniki na jamii akwamba in these days he went to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when they when and when they came, he called his disciples and chose from uh, and chose the chose from them uh, uh, twelve, whom he named Apostle Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas and James and Alphaeus and Simon, who was called Zealot, and Judah the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became the traitor. Now, what does this uh, tell us, friends? If Jesus himself was, uh, was God, but he didn't shy away from prayer. When it, he wanted to start his ministry, he chose to begin on prayer, and he had to build his ministry on prayer. What does that mean to us? Or what does it, uh, you know, when we, when we read the book of Luke, chapter 6, and we see him before, before we, see, we see him before choosing the, uh, choosing the disciples, he first goes on prayer. If Jesus Christ can value prayer as the beginning point of his ministry, what about us? And now look at Jesus Christ starting, starting ministry on prayer. And um, where is his ministry now? Several years after that, several years, several centuries after that, what has come to, what has come to happen? What has come to pass? The ministry has continued to be stronger, stable, and unshakable, unsinkable. You can't sing the ministry of Jesus. You cannot sing the ministry of Jesus. It's unsinkable. No Titanic that can come to conquer the kingdom of God. In any case, it is the kingdom that is conquering other kingdoms. And so uh, he started this ministry strictly on prayer. And even when the storms arose, they could not bring this ministry down. The disciples that we see Jesus selecting after prayer, they have stood the test of time. They stood uh, at the test of a persecution. They never bowed to persecution. They defended them. They became apologetic. They became influential. And so our marriage, if we ever anticipate our marriage to be influential, our marriage to not to sing, our marriage to be a place of um, to yield a force to reckon with, then we need to go back to our knees. We need to begin everything we start in our marriage. Day one of our marriage, day two of our marriage, day four of our marriage. And anytime we are beginning anything to do with our marriage, we begin on prayer. Number two, choose your values the standards for life, and make sure you live by them. Don't waver. Uh, don't, 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 uh, you know, uh, no matter what happens, 
let us attain values, the standards, and these standards should be biblical standards. At this point in our discussion, we I believe you have come up with the theology of your marriage. By the way, this is a marriage class. After this marriage class, uh, remember the class is called marriage and family. So I'm going to do a, a, a comprehensive, a comprehensive uh, exposition on family. And I'm going to do a, a, an extensive composition of uh, exposition on family. But before I do that, I want us to build our marriage first, then we go and build our, our families, then we build our home. What are some of the values you have as a spouse, as a wife of that home, as a couple? Uh, what are some of the values you have set that you find uh, no matter the time, they can, they can withstand time, they can withstand uh, pressure, that can be that can yield from the in-laws, can yield from workplace, can yield from neighborhood, uh, can yield from you know uh, the governance of our country, the political of our, the political um, uh, uh, stability or instability of our country. What are some of the values you have laid da da down as a couple? Kama muke, kama mme. Ni uh, values, ni mambo gani ya mbayo unayadhamini katika ndawa yako? Ni viwango vipi ambazo umezitilia mkazo na hauja compromise? Those things. Allow me to share, allow me to share my, a value, or rather a standard I viewed uh, from my elder sister's marriage. My elder sister, uh, who at the moment all of her daughters are married and the last born is a, a young man who is through with school and pursuing uh, his college. From the beginning of their marriage to date, he treats his husband as a king and the husband treats him as and that is the standard they have set in that home. And I want to admit here that I don't know if they you know each other's name because I've never had them. I've never had them. They have now grandchildren. They have been married uh, from 1986 until now. I've never had any of them calling any of one, any, uh, any, uh, uh, either a name. If, if they have to shout a name, they'll call the name of the child, but they rarely do that. So that's the standard they have set, and it has stood uh, the test of time. Uh, the Lord blessed them with five, five girls, uh, continuous, number one to number four were girls. And that brought a lot of pressure from the in-laws, especially uh, the, 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 the parent side and the brothers and the, the sisters of the of of my brother-in-law and they placed a lot of pressure on him to get a, a, a woman who can uh, 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 give birth to a son but the standard that he had set and the values that he had set they stood time and as we talk now uh, the Lord blessed them with a son after or the fifth the fifth born was a son and they are living they are living now a happy life Actually, they are done with, the, with, the, with, 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 with childbearing. What they are doing now, they are raising the grandchildren. What are some of the values that we need to uh, incorporate? In the beginning of this class, we had Jim Buckley. Uh, we had Jim Buckley who came and spoke uh, with, the, with his wife. And they told us they have been married for 54 years. And some of the standards they have, um, they, they have, uh, put in place is Jesus first, Jesus first. It's uh, the wife to Jimmy is Glenda. So it's not Glenda first, it's, it's Jesus first. That's the standard. And, uh, it, uh, and, 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 and to Glenda, it's not Jimmy who is first, but Jesus first, it's Jesus who comes first. So as a spouse, who is first? Whom do you put first? You put Jesus first, then your spouse, or do you put your spouse first, then Jesus? 
in any case, uh, when we put Jesus first, we'll definitely honor our husbands. But when you put our husbands first, we'll not see Jesus. We'll see our husbands. But if we, we see Jesus, we'll see our husbands. Because our husbands is a total rep representation of uh, or a reflection of Christ Jesus. So what are some of your fina finance values, finance standards? What standards have you placed in your home, the, the financial standards? There are family, uh, I remember Jim Buckley saying, uh, one to them, one of the things they have put in their marriage, there's no money for Glenda, and neither there is money for Jimmy. That is family money. And it being family money, the first, the first thing they do is to tithe to the Lord, to tithe to the Lord, to give it to the Lord, the 10% of it. I remember them saying that in, uh, among the children God has blessed them, there is no child who says this child belongs to the mother or is, uh, is mama's favorite or is daddy's favorite. Because they have not presented, they have not presented the family in a fragmented way. The family presented in a, a fragmented way. They have not fragmented the family. They have not divided the family. But they have cultivated an aspect of um, an aspect of um, you know uh, co cohesion. There is consensus in that particular marriage. So. What kind of standard? I want to ask you once again, as you finish this class, as you continue this class, what are some of the standards are, are you place, putting in for, forward? Are you the kind of a person who gives dictation, who dictates what is to be done? The center of power uh, starts from you and ends on you. It doesn't spread out to the family members. So what standard do you want to put in place? The godly standard will allow you to build consensus when there is a need to be, to be solved. Uh, the godly values or the godly standard will, uh, uh, will allow you to, to provide security where somebody feels secure, where somebody feels safe to be in that particular class. So as we... As, as we continue, I'd like you to have a very strong focus, um, a very strong focus on the standard that you need to set as, um, as, as, as you continue. Now, allow me to move on to the next, uh, to the next point. Well, number C, I'm seeing Ben is in here. Ben Muema, could you read number C? Ben Muema. Number C, get yes. acquainted, get acquainted, spending time together, just dating, become friendly and stay friends. You know, that is, that is something that misses uh, in most of the families that we have. Uh, friendship ends on dating before marriage. And dating ends on that day you do your wedding. But how will you know? How will you know each other? I remember in one of the classes, and Ben, you can remind me because you have been present throughout. I remember saying that I remember saying that the personalities change as you you get into marriage. Uh, I, I, ben, I hope you remember we when we are talking about. Um, Conducting conducting a personality test. You remember I mentioned of, of personality test. Do you remember that, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. I'm checking. Uh, when the, when I did that, I think uh, before we started, I mentioned about uh, personality test, and I I said that um, when you do a personality test you realize that it is something that you need to keep doing it, keep doing it, because they keep changing uh, the personality test, they keep changing now and then. But how do you 
your husband, uh, your wife, your spouse. It is through uh, making friendship, uh, being in a position to hang up together. Uh, take your wife for ch ch chicken in, chicken in uh, for a pizza. Uh, uh, take your wife for a pizza once, once in a while, once in a month. Hang up uh, in the evening if I'm told all of you, you are working. Uh, one of the days God has blessed you, you have come home early. Where is the problem to hold your self uh, hand and go to the shop or to the market to buy uh, to buy the groceries or hang up in the kitchen together and cook just in the kitchen? Even when you have little children like I have mine, uh, your wife is she's in the kitchen, you have just returned home, hang up in the kitchen, hang up in the kitchen, regardless of how old you are. We can still rekindle our, our our marriage and see that we are living those days of our honeymoon. Now, the question that I want to make, which is rhetoric, is: Is your wife a friend? Is your wife a friend? It's a rhetoric question. You don't need to answer, but you can reflect on it. How your spouse? How how do you look at your spouse? How do you look at your spouse? Or who is your spouse? How do you look at your spouse? You know, uh, how you look at your wife, the perspective you look at your wife, determines the attitude that you have. If you have the attitude of a friend, he, he is a friend to you, then you'll treat that friend by giving him quality time. One of the things that we can all agree here in this class is that uh, a person you refer as a friend takes much of your time than the rest who are just others in your circle, circle of life. So one of the greatest things to make your home a safety place to land, a safety place to go, a secure place for you to be, a place of fun, a place of celebration is turning your spouse into a friend, turning your wife into a friend and then uh i will say that let confirmation of your marriage especially of your spouse come from you and not others in other words we are going to look at uh, the five languages of love in the class and one of it is affirmation how do you uh appraise you are how do you appraise your you are your spouse are you the kind of a wife who doesn't see any good thing coming from your spouse then if that is the case how will you have the issue of friendship to come and to take place so we need to create a conducive environment where friendship will naturally grow we need to create a conducive environment where friendship will naturally grow where dating will naturally come, where prayers will naturally come in place. So uh, making a marriage a place, uh, 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 making a marriage a place where your spouse makes the approval of the other and you know you appreciate each other, you get affirmation from inside, from inside the house, from your spouse, before jumping out there, it uh, has uh, 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 you know, it has a secure place in the life of your spouse. And so I encourage us to look into it that we we do that. Sorry, I was mentioning about personality test. I thought I'd spoken it long ago. Uh, little did I know that was where I was moving next. Personality test is important in premarital uh, pre before marriage, and it is equally important as you continue with marriage. So as you move on, I challenge you to look at um, a book, Gary Chapman, Five Love uh, Languages. It is mostly, they do mostly have ebooks, and so it is easy to access the book. Keep building your marriage. Marriage is not built on one day. It is an issue where you intentionally, uh, intentionally I'll work into your marriage, investing in your marriage. 
and so you need to broaden uh, the investment uh, of your marriage. And how do you do this? Number one, you need to consider setting priorities. What are the priorities of your marriage? And these priorities need to be biblical. They need to be biblical. Number one is to number one is to seek God in your marriage. Number one priority of uh, or rather one of the activity that you can carry out that will grow your marriage is to seek God. Uh, number number two is to be persistent, persistent in 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 marriage. There's no much you can achieve if you are not persistent. We have been given dominion. We have been given dominion. And this dominion requires resilience. This dominion requires resilience. So we have to be resilient. We have to exercise uh, persistence in the things that we are doing. We need to be able to bounce back when we have uh, experienced a conflict. Wakati na kosana kidogo, tusikae sana kama tumekosana. We need to bounce back that fast and keep life moving. The story of Adam and Eve, they, it plays a very key role. It reminds us of the authority that we yield, the power that happens in our lives. And uh, as a matter of fact, we need to live a life of surrender. I remember mentioning, uh, I remember mentioning, uh, Benson, you'll be reading for us uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, uh, Benson Moema. I remember mentioning to us that by the time you undress for your spouse, you have, you have, any, you have, you have, you have given it whole, and there is nothing you you are hiding. And in fact, uh, the spouses who normally make love when lights are on, those are spouses who have really uh, reached a point of surrender, a point where they are not ashamed of their spouse in any given way. They have come to a point where they just give it all, give it all. And they say, uh, nothing I can hide from you. There's no, there's nothing I can be ashamed when I am with you because you are everything, you are, ev you are my everything, uh, you are my everything, you are my all, you know, you are, you are my all, you are my everything. So there is, there is nothing I can hide from you. At that point, I don't know, Ben, if you have, if you have opened that uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, Mwema, Mwema. I'm on phone somewhere, Pastor. Uh, that, 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 that's fine. Uh, Peter Kasui, read for us Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Or Wellington, whoever comes first. Wellington. Yes. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter? 2, verse 5 to Okay, a minute, a minute. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2. Okay, it says Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Your mm. attitude should be the same as that of Christ who being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking, to very, taking the very nature of a servant, being made a human, in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, 
that at this name of Jesus every knee should in heaven and on earth and under the, the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the, to the glory of God the Father. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, uh, friends, this comes equation. At what degree do you surrender to your spouse? And uh, I've just given you, for example, it could be a hypothesis. It could be a hypothesis that it is it, it just goes that if you are shy of your husband, why makes you what causes you to be shy? Eh? Do you, when you want to make love to your spouse, you switch off the lights. When your spouse is in the bedroom, you cannot change. You wait until he's out, then you change. Or in fact, you can go to the extent of requesting your spouse to be out of the house for you to change. Or your time when he has stepped out, that is when you hurriedly change. Why, 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 why are you getting ashamed of, of, your, of, of, your, of, your, of your spouse? Now, remember, I'm talking about how we can build our marriage. How we can build our marriage. And I've mentioned that we need to set our priorities right. And number two, I've said that we need to be persistent. We need to develop resilience. And number three, I'm saying we need to surrender. And number four, I'm saying we need to be committed. So we need to be totally committed to our marriage. And what this means is that uh, at no point should we think of divorce. And you Ani ni kama ni kazi umajiriwa so kuna green pasture wewe well, unajiriwa kazi hapo lakini unaona kuna green pasture mahali ama ni biashara unafungua biashara lakini unakaa pale lakini unangoja ile wakati utafungua biashara zingine doa usifikirie utafika wakati kutoka kwa na mtazamo ya kwamba doa ni mahali ambapo uko liwe liwalo kae hapo whatever that found you there zikwe ni matuzi za mother in law Ikwenu maskinu kosefu wa pesa, kazi kuisha, whatever happens, sickness, yoyote ile, it is a purpose, you purpose. And that purpose, you need to carry it to, to the end. Now, what are the basics of marriage? Basic number one, I want to take you through basics of marriage. I hope you have pens you are writing because I will not share this note. Basic number one for your marriage is prayer. Love and respect one another. Communicate. Resolve conflicts. Fight the right enemy. Fight the right enemy. You know, sometimes we think our spouses are our enemies. But, you know, we have already said that we need to make our, our spouses our friends. They are not our enemies, and neither will they be our enemies at any point. But how can we achieve this? How can we achieve this? How can we achieve love for one another? How can we achieve respect towards each other? How can we uh, uh, achieve communication? If your marriage is suffering from a communication challenge, how else can we achieve uh, communication, getting back to our marriage? Uh, to our marriage? How, what is the ability for us to resolve conflicts? Now, ability to resolve conflict, ability to know your enemy, ability to communicate, to love each other, they are built in basic rule number one, prayer. Get in the Bible. I don't know how often you read it in your Bible, but I would like you to have uh, each of us, if you are able to come up with scriptures that are building our marriage, then it will be a, a, a great deal. Now, goal setting. It is a good time that when you go for outing or you go out for a hotel, I'm talking about keeping our marriage. How do you put, uh, what are the basics of your marriage? What are uh, some of the uh, building of your marriage? You talked about priorities, persistence, surrender, commitment, and then uh, the, the conducting personality tests. I uh, uh, getting married and uh, all the stuff uh, a minute first. Yeah, that's where. 
Uh, just a minute. Yeah, basically, I put the penny to go. So, uh, deal with sin, fight the sin, stay awake to sin, know your desires. What is the source of sin? If you are an immoral person, if you are masturbating, if you are a, a pornographic person, if you are having those challenges that lead to sin, so how do you deal with those sin? Because that's the only way you are going to set your marriage right. And it's a basic need of your marriage. Each and every time you need to repent. How, uh, you know, when you go through a one month dry spell, that is not natural. There is something wrong, either from your spouse or from yourself. But where there is where there is forgiveness, where there is openness, where there is you know where, where there is nothing to be uh, to be to he to hide, it goes without saying that even when you are making love, you'll make it in the light. You 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 let your li lights of your bedroom on, and then you go ahead and make love. And at the same time, you can only do that when there is nothing you are hiding from your spouse. That is why it will be easy for you to give in. So your marriage should be, first of all, whatever you want to discuss in marriage, talk about money, talk about discipleship, talk about winning, talk about whatever you can put it in the church setting. It's in the Bible. Dating, it's in the Bible. Supporting your wife financially is in the Bible. Or your wife supporting your husband financially is in the Bible. So whatever we talk is in the Bible. Uh, now, uh, I, I want, us, I want to, to challenge that uh, we start writing uh, journal. What I mean is uh, keeping notes of the things we learn about our marriage, practical things that we learn about our marriage. So what are some of the factors that you need to use to build a godly marriage? Factors in building a godly marriage. I want to welcome uh, Stanley. Could you read what you are able to see on the screen? OK. <clears throat> Factors in building a godly marriage. We have uh, communication in marriage, part one. Listen, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Uh, James so, chapter 1, verse 19. So what is the rule number one of your marriage? Communication. What about communication? Communication is part one. Listening. Li Listening. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You know, you are just right. It's just communication. It's just communication. It's just communication. So under communication, we are going to make a list. So we have started with the listening. So you are just right. Ari, what, what will go wrong when you just keep quiet, but not in a rude way? Uh, your spouse, Aonge Amalize, and what is it wrong? What, you talk and when you finish, the other one will come and talk. Listening is a skill and listening saves an anchor because you will answer appropriately having listened well and that goes as a plus. Now, uh, one of the things I want us to talk about is... Um, Listen with your heart. Don't just listen for the sake. Listen with your heart. I don't know kama mbaya ambia, unajisikia kweli, unajisikiza kweli. Your spouse anakwambia, unajisikiza kweli bila unaongea. Are you able to listen to yourself even before you talk? Have you listened to yourself? That's what I'm thinking about here. Your spouse, in fact sometimes even unaweza kuambia watoto so listen with your eyes, look at the body language, uh, what is happening on the body language of this particular person. Uh, look at the attitude, what is, uh, what is the attitude 
of this particular person and then uh, what is the response and sometimes this response can can can, can, can you know can be contradictory you think is 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 going to hate you instead is going to love you more so we just have to be very keen and very observant that the devil does not take advantage of our marriage so on communication part two what is there uh let me ask who uh stanley still yeah communication part two talks about speaking mm. it says uh, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful in building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Yeah, this is basically, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful with what comes. Most marriages have crumpled. I've ended in divorce because of speaking and not listening. And on speaking, there's an unfable speaking. When you look at the book of Genesis chapter 31 verse 2, book of Genesis chapter 31 verse 2, uh, then somebody said that uh, your body language commands 58% of what you share. You can write that book caring enough to hear. So you can look at that and then you, you can go and buy and read. Pablo speaking. So on speaking, of course, there is a types of speaking. We have laughing. We have laughing. Uh, uh, we have laughing, singing, praising, and praying. And all of them are there. Uh, I say I have two minutes to end. Uh, there is a book called uh, The Lasting Promise. I will recommend if you can get it to read. Uh, then there is a, a skill that the teacher needs to get. We have the other side of communication. We have picked two. And this end, we want to, to pick. Uh, we have also to look at uh, the rules for both. The one who is talking and the one who is listening. In our next class, because I have one minute remaining, I'll be able to talk about communication. Do you feel yourself? Do you feel your spouse? Before Mwambie, when the uko, have you felt how that will eat him? Ask yourself that question. Before you ask your husband, you need to know that. How will you feel? How will you feel? So we need to listen, not just listen, but listen aggressively. And if it's to think on our action, we need to think aggressively. Whatever that we do from there, we need to do it with commitment. Now, uh, the spoken words that you speak with your wife or with your spouse, imagine they only have 77%. The rest, so the rest is on the body language. The life you live either side, how much you have listened, it really communicates a lot. Well, uh, rule number one, stick to God's rule. Uh, rule number two, stick to God's rule. Stick number three, stick to God's rule. Allow me to end the class there. Uh, when we come next time, we'll talk about PrEP, which simply means Prevention and Relationship Engagement Program. Having reached there, I want to welcome questions before we conclude with a word of prayer. Questions, observation, and remarks. What you need us to improve in the next class? Any question?
if there isn't any question, I want to invite Ben Bukachi to greet us. If he can switch on his camera and then greet us, it will be good. Or all of us, let me stop sharing. Uh, uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, uh, I'm stopping to share so that uh, we we can we can uh, we, we